Hey guys, happy new year. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post new videos every week. So we're starting off 2023 with a video that I wanted to do, but I decided to hold off on it and wait until the new year because a lot of people are interested in starting a YouTube channel. So there are so many benefits of starting a YouTube channel if that's something that you're interested in. So I'm gonna break down what it takes, is it worth it, how to do it, and what I wish I knew before starting my own channel. So if you are somebody that is interested in starting a nail YouTube channel, a vlog channel, anything on the YouTube platform, this is going to be for you. This year will be your year, so you can go ahead and start. It's great passive income. So we're gonna get into all of that and more right now. thing I want to talk about is why. Why would you want to start a YouTube channel, especially now in 2023? So one, it's a good source of income. It can be passive income in the beginning. Again, once you get monetized, it's very little chump change, but it's something that can eventually lead to probably your number one source of income. We all follow many YouTubers and see what they make, whether it's a lie or not, there's this whole theory people lie. But we have many successful people on this platform that make so much money, tens of thousands of dollars a month, and that's their number one source of income. So that is the first thing of why you would want to create a YouTube channel because who doesn't want to make more money? Also, YouTube is such a good outlet to express yourself. So whether you want to start a nail channel, lashing, beauty, hair, just vlogging, your everyday life, whatever kind of channel that you want to do, it's a good platform that lets you express yourself no matter what you want to talk about. It's your world. It's your channel. Talk about anything that you want to. Another huge benefit is it's a really good exposure for technicians. So while you might be new and starting out your channel, it'll take a while for people to find you. It's still a good outlet. You're so many people are going to come across your channel and discover you, follow you, maybe become a client, become a subscriber, a follower, whatever the case may be. It's a good networking opportunity as a tech to put yourself out there. Again, whether you're putting your work out there, you're putting yourself out there, your life out there, whatever you choose to do, you are exposing yourself as a technician. And another thing is before you even become monetized, because that can take a while to, be, to get monetized, to actually start to see some financial benefits from YouTube. It is such a great community to build. Like I love you guys that watch my channel that are subscribed. I love our little community and it's just interacting with people. Sometimes that's definitely more satisfying than any type of paycheck or anything to see that you're actually bringing something to the platform and helping other people out. And then also too, before you even get monetized, while you are gaining followers and subscribers, it's a good opportunity for you to get yourself out there like I just mentioned. And then if you have other things that you're doing, again, now someone that's a subscriber can become a student of yours if you're ordering courses or if you have an Etsy shop or a Shopify shop or you sell digital products or you do this or that. Now you have a bigger audience to present your products and your services to. So it's definitely great for that. And that's something that you can start to see almost immediately before you even becoming monetized. I'm going to leave a link above with my five top passive income ideas. So again, if you are starting your channel, check out that video. And those are definitely ways that I recommend that you can start to make some passive income within your channel before even getting monetized. So how do you start a YouTube channel? Literally, all you need is a Gmail account. Nothing. That's it. You go to YouTube.com, you sign up, boom, you start your channel. There are so many other videos out there on YouTube, so I'm not going to get into the breakdown that walks you through how to actually set it up, what to click. You can already find that. I'm not going to rediscuss that. I will leave a link below about for some people that I followed in helping me create my YouTube channel. And I will leave that below so you can go check that out if you're interested in the proper steps on how to start a channel. But it's 
it takes almost nothing. But there are some questions that you might want to ask yourself before starting your channel. So one thing you want to ask yourself is, what is going to be your niche on YouTube? So again, I have a video I will leave above about how to find your niche. But if you are, let's say, you wanted to start a nail channel, what kind of channel do you want to start? What is going to be your niche? This is going to be very, very crucial in the success of your channel. Do you want to do tutorials? Do you want to vlog? Do you want to present education? How? What is your channel going to be about? What are you bringing to the platform? Especially if you can find something that's not already there, which is going to be a little bit difficult. So don't stress too much about what's not there. But if it is there, how can you do it different? So what are you bringing to the YouTube channel? What will your subscribers gain from watching your channel? Is it just satisfaction? Is it entertainment? Is it what are they gaining information, knowledge? What are they gaining by subscribing? By clicking subscribe, why am I subscribing to your channel? So this is something that you definitely want to ask yourself in kind of coming up with the idea for your channel. For me personally, my struggle was when I was teaching and during COVID, we went online and I was trying to find videos because outside of my demos, I just wanted to bring some type of funness to the classroom online and bring them other videos that weren't something that I was doing and demo and stuff like that. So in trying to find stuff, especially skateboard stuff, it was so hard. I'm like, no one's talking about the education of nails. You have other people that are out there that are actually talking about education, but a lot of stuff on YouTube in the nail industry is just tutorials and demos, watch me works, day in the life. That's it. No one's talking about the education. So this is where I thought I can come onto this platform to present something while it's already being done by some people in some aspect. How can I come on and make it different? I wanted to bring that to the channel. So that was my niche that I found in creating my YouTube channel. Because you can even also notice in watching my channel, I don't do a lot of tutorials and demos because a lot of stuff is already done. A lot of nail art that's trending, a lot of stuff that people want to know how to do. It's been done. I don't need to come on here. That wouldn't be successful for me to say, how do we do pop art nails? There's so many videos already on that. That's going to actually make it harder for the algorithm to pick up my video because I am a smaller channel. It's going to shove out the more popular channels and people before someone even comes across it. So why am I going to touch on a topic that's already been done to death. So I don't do a lot of tutorials and demos. When I do do tutorials and demos, you'll notice, I feel like it's something that maybe I have a twist on or I can, I felt like I can break it down a little bit easier or it's something that you guys requested. Those are the only times that I really do tutorials and demos. A lot of the times you see, I even kind of niche down my niche to kind of sticking more with the business aspect of the nail industry. So what do you need to start a YouTube channel? Let's go over a couple things that you might need just to get started. So first thing is a camera or an iPhone or an Android, whatever phone you have. That's it. You don't have to wait until you have professional equipment to start your channel. I do every single thing on my phone while I am in the process of trying to upgrade my, my life and my channel. I started on my phone. Don't wait until you have everything you need. My thing was once you start to develop your channel, you start to see it being a little successful, you can make small little upgrades in your equipment that you can use. But honestly, a phone is all you really need to get started. You don't need a fancy thousand dollar camera to start filming and making videos. The next thing that you're going to need is some type of editing software. So iMovie is super popular. A lot of people use that. I use Adobe Rush. There's many other editing softwares on there. Again, if you're going to be editing on your phone or you're going to be editing on a computer, you want to kind of look into that. I find that Adobe, for me, it works better on my phone, actually, but it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't work on the computer greatly. I don't, I don't know why. So I actually want to switch. I do everything on my phone, like I said right now, but I do want to end up changing to an actual camera to start editing on my computer because storage is now becoming a little bit of an issue with my video. So that's the only thing. But again, I'm years in now at this point. So it takes a while to kind of get to the point where it's like, okay, 
I feel like I need to upgrade things. And you'll know when that time comes, but you don't need a fancy $100 software downloaded on your computer to start editing your videos. So some optional equipment that you might wanna get is maybe a microphone. Depending on your area, your situation, where you're gonna be filming, you might want to invest in a microphone. Again, Amazon sells so many little things that you can buy for your phone for vlogging and filming. So I will leave a link below to some of the things that I've purchased that are just little things I've bought over time that are for my phone that help me in filming some of the videos. So a small mic, you might notice, I don't really wear it too much because I feel like the audio on my phone is actually fine. But if I do feel that, I don't know why I use it. If, it, if it's like certain things that I'm doing something or whatever the case, I don't know, then I'll put, I have a little like clip on mic that runs underneath my shirt and plugs right into the side of my phone. So that helps with the audio as well. A ring light or a selfie stick, some type of stand. I'm using a ring light right now. I don't use the actual light because I noticed the glare in my glasses, which I have to change my glasses because filming with this ring light has been a problem, but I do use it as a stand. I do have a selfie stick that I do use sometimes. I use that mainly if you see me filming in my house because I have nothing over there. So I'll use the selfie stick to kind of prop up the phone over there. But here I use a selfie stick, which is an awesome selfie stick. Again, I'm gonna leave the link below to the stuff that I use and the equipment. So you can go ahead and check that out. But the main thing is I told myself from jump, I refuse and I will not invest in all this equipment for my channel until I can actually start making money from it. So when I make money from YouTube, YouTube can pay for me to upgrade. I refuse and I still refuse to spend money on expensive equipment out of pocket from other sources of income that I have because I don't want to invest thousands of dollars into all this equipment. Let's say I did that two months in and then either I didn't have the time to film anymore, I didn't care to film anymore, or it just didn't work out. I didn't want it to be a waste of money. So that was my number one rule to myself. Until I make money from YouTube, I'm not investing in anything really that's super costly for the channel. So some tips that I have for you in starting your channel would be, one, it takes a while to get used to filming, to get used to filming yourself, to hearing yourself, to knowing where your camera is from your phone to talking to yourself. It could be very, very uncomfortable and unnatural in the beginning. So just give it some time and it, you will eventually get it. So that was the one thing that I was like, this is weird to just sit here and have a whole conversation with myself. But now my phone is person and I know how to talk to it. So that takes a little bit of time to get used to. Second thing is knowing where to look. So again, if you are filming on your phone, for example, I'm filming on my iPhone right now. I want to look at myself. If I look at myself, this is how my eyeballs look. If I look at my camera, now I'm talking to you. So it's very hard, especially when you're filming to see yourself. I could flip it, but to me that's worse. So you have to know where to position your eyes. So again, when you're editing your videos, it's crucial to see, okay, so this lighting is really bad. This is how I should tilt my head. Maybe I shouldn't look really up. I found that when I do use light, I can't really look up because I get glares in my glasses. So when you are editing, it's very important to, especially as you grow and you start to have several videos, go back and look at old videos and see, how can I upgrade this? How can I change this a little bit? Again, these are things just to come with time. So it's just a little tip for me to you. Another tip is find the perfect time to film. Noise can be an issue if you live in any type of city. We know it's crazy. I am in New York City and you guys see when I leave the little edits and when I try to film in the afternoon and I have sirens, ambulance, people playing, cars honking. It's so ridiculous. So find the right time to film when you have the least amount of noise in your area and you don't have to worry about it. Because some things you can fix in editing but I find that some things are really hard to because the more I take down background sound, the more kind of muffled my voice gets. So again, just find the perfect time a day to film. I like to film super early. I film on the weekends when everybody's still sleeping. It's super quiet. No one in the house is awake. I don't have people screaming, door slamming. This is the ideal time for me. To film, so just find a nice quiet time because it's gonna save you so much time in editing if you just film stuff the right way one time, the first time around. Lastly, best tip I have for you is be yourself. People will smell if you are coming off fake, if you're coming off unnatural, so just 
be yourself. If people like you, they like you. If they don't, they don't. We're not here to please everybody. You cannot please everybody. But being yourself and being genuine is one of the things that will make you successful, especially on a channel like YouTube. If you come off to sales pitchy, to just fake and phony, just be natural, be yourself, and people will love you and they will see that you are being your genuine self. So do not stray away from yourself and try to be like your favorite YouTube person. We all have people that we look up to in the YouTube world, but we are not trying to be them. We are trying to get inspired by them and maybe their style and their videos. But I'm not going to change the way I film because I want to film just like her. I want to be just like him. Be yourself. If you are talking about something that is genuine to you, that you love, it will come off very natural, simple, and easy. So just be yourself. So some things that I wish I knew before I started my channel. It takes time to grow. I'm not going to lie to you. Like a lot of time. I knew that going in. So I was prepared for that. I was prepared to say this This, this could be a couple years. It, it could be a while. And I knew that going in. So my advice is just don't get frustrated too quickly. If you have a video and it only has three views and you like no one cares you'll be surprised hang in there it takes time to grow again as a small channel it takes a lot when someone types in nail tech or acrylic nails you are at the bottom of the list so you have to find different ways to pick yourself up in the algorithm for it to reach other people and people to find you and watch your videos. And again, this goes back to your niche. What are you talking about? So if I stumble upon your page, am I interested in what you have to say? So what is gonna make you stick out? So sometimes we have clickbait, that could be one way people click your video. You have the actual thumbnail itself, the title, your tags. There's a lot of different things that can help push you up in the algorithm. So you want to just give it some time. Luckily, I was fortunate enough to have my channel grow quite quickly. I know some people, I've heard it takes people three, four years to get monetized. So I was monetized after a year and a half. Was it a half? Almost basically a half, a year and a half. And I was able to reach my thousand subscribers underneath the year. So that was, I was very lucky for that. But I did do my research, which brings me to another point. Your marketing and your research. So this is something that I kind of took it upon myself, but I'm going to put it out there to you guys because I did it as like a, I don't know what I'm doing. I need help. So I'm just on YouTube trying to find videos on how to grow. How do you get subscribers? How do you do this? Do your research. Again, I'm going to leave some people that are amazing and this is what they do. This is what their channel is about, helping other smaller channels grow. I will leave links below if you are interested in watching that for yourself because it only can help you for it, not for YouTube, but for your Instagram, for your TikTok, whatever you got going on, they, it can help you. So I'll leave those links below. But you want to make sure that you are doing your research. And when I say research, I mean your SEO, again, your tags. How are you writing your descriptions of your video? Are the descriptions matching the title of the video, which match the tags, which match the thumbnail? These are all little things that you're not even thinking of. You just wrote a day in my life. No description, no tags, whatever. For some people it works, they get noticed, maybe they're marketing in other ways and bringing people to the platform to subscribe. But there's a lot of different tips and tricks out there that you can pick up in how to make your channel grow. And we wanna make sure that we can pop up on someone's search. So again, your SEO and finding a way for the algorithm to recommend your stuff to other people. We have to, that helps your tags. The tags that you write in your video will help get it pushed out to other people. I also have a link down below for, I think I took it off actually. I will put it back for this video. I used to work, my one of my first affiliates I worked with was TubeBuddy. So TubeBuddy is a program that helps you find tags. So it shows you how, if I write beginner nail tech, how many people and how are looking for this tag? How, what is the probability of me popping up if someone types in beginner nail tech. So TubeBuddy is an excellent source for writing tags if you are trying to kind of get your stuff to stand out, which brings me to staying on top of current trends because tags was a big thing that was going on a couple years ago when I started my channel. Again, I took out TubeBuddy. I still use TubeBuddy, but I don't kind of promote that affiliate link anymore. But if you stay on top of 
current trends, the algorithm's always changing how it's going to find stuff. Just like hashtags aren't the thing anymore for Instagram. You want to stay on top of this because these are ways that your channel, they're going to push up the people in the channels that are doing the more current ways to get themselves noticed. And again, you'll start to fall back. So we want to make sure we're staying on top of current trends. Again, following people that this is their job. This is what they do. They guide you in how to grow your channel. So we want to stay on top of current trends and keep doing our research. Lastly, it takes time to film. I'm not going to lie to you. It is it could be a pain sometimes to find the time to film. I wanted to be asleep this morning, but I have to film this video. It is what it is. It becomes a part of you. It becomes another job, a job that is satisfying in some ways, but you're not making any money from it. So you have to kind of love what you're doing in order for your channel to grow. So you have to find the time to film, find the time to edit, make your thumbnails and everything else that goes into it. It takes a lot of time. It is a another full-time job that you will have. So you want to be committed to it. You want to stay with it. Again, it could take a while. You might have five views on the first 50 videos you do, but stay with it. Do your research. If you see that you're getting five views for every video and you have 50 videos, I would definitely click the people that I'm mentioning below and go and follow them and see what they can recommend to boost your views up and everything. So you want to just kind of stick with it, but it takes a lot to film and edit and produce these videos, but don't quit, do not quit. So if you are thinking about starting a YouTube channel and you woke up January 1st and said, you know, 2023 is gonna be my year, I say do it, do it, because you won't know until you actually try. So go ahead, start your nail channel, start whatever channel, your vlog channel, whatever you wanna be, or maybe YouTube wasn't something you even thought about and after watching this video, you're like, hmm, maybe, do it. Why not go right ahead? I encourage you to do it. If it's something that you might end up really liking. It might end up being just a form of therapy and talking to the camera sometimes and expressing yourself. Do it. If you don't have all the stuff, you don't know what you want to talk about yet, you don't need a niche to start. Just start doing stuff and see what ends up happening. If you actually look at some, this is one thing that I like to do. I like to always go back to people that I follow on YouTube. I like to go back to their first video because I like to see what they started their channel with. Let's take long hair, pretty nails, very popular. If you're watching my channel, you've definitely seen her channel. So um, one day I'm going on her channel when I first discovered her, I went all the way back to her first video. She was actually more talking about hair. She starts talking about hair, hair products. I think she talked a little bit about skincare. Then she did like a nail video. It did well. You can't go by views because people go back and watch stuff. So the views are gonna be a lot higher than they were several years ago when she got started. And then she did a nail video, it did really good. Then you can start to see, she starts throwing in one nail videos because now she found her niche. Then it's straight nails from there. So she was starting off doing something she wanted to talk about. She wanted to maybe talk about hair, hair products, hair care, skin, whatever. I think it was something like that. And then all of a sudden, but she saw, well, when I do my nails, people like that. People will always tell you what they want to listen, what they want to watch. So you want to listen to your audience, pay attention to your analytics as you are making your videos because if you are filming something and you realize no one cares about this don't film what you want to film film what you think your audience wants so and that might sound a little weird but at the end of the day they are the ones that are subscribed they are the ones that are tuning in so again i don't really do too many tutorials and demos some of those actually are some of my lowest views when i do my education and my business my views skyrocket and it does what it does very well for my channel. So I'm paying attention to my analytics to see what I need to film more of and what I need to film less of. So we want to pay attention to something like that. But again, back to the main point of don't wait to say, I don't know what I want to film. Do a vlog. Then do a watch me work. Do a day in the life. See which one. Go out all different types of videos and see which one it starts to bite and then go from there. If you guys have any other questions on how to start a YouTube channel for your nail business or for any other thing, I mean, by any means, I'm no expert, but I'm going to leave some people down below. Like I said, I'm going to leave the equipment that I use down below. If you have any other questions, leave them down below and don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.